Mr. George. Hey, how you doing? I want to give everybody a little uh, a little idea how busy of a guy you are. So you've done about how many sessions? Just just uh, 2020. I think it was around 1,851 or 52. So we got a question here, George. If you want to take it. Any help for shaking and panting on a car ride, no matter how small? Huge anxiety and CBD doesn't help. Vermont dog trainer Ian Grant picks the brains of dog trainers across America. Listen as he tackles owner concerns on talking dogs. Join him for Chit Chat, a behind-the-scenes look at running Vermont Dog Trainer. The Vermont Dog Trainer Show is your common-sense, down-to-earth advisor on all things dog training. Now, here's your host, Ian Grant. Welcome to Chit Chat, everybody. Uh, Here we are trying a new uh, platform for our podcast episode and we are taping live on our Facebook page as well. So if you're listening to this podcast, uh, you can join us every Wednesday at 1230 p.m. on our Vermont Dog Trainer Facebook page. So uh, with that being said, I think we'll... uh, Cinder went home. Cinder went home. Right. That went well. She... um, That was a really good take home because... We just wanted to work on walking, right? Because her her stimulation level around walks and stuff, distractions, and and this is why this is why it's so good having these uh, follow ups, having so many of them. Yeah, is that now the the sessions are shorter and we don't have to go so deep totally in each one, and so it got way easier uh, with that, and it was it was so much nicer too. It's also nice having the time in between so that problems can arise they can start seeing things at home and yeah how do i deal with this oh i'm struggling here oh i get to go back next week and and she uh she had messaged me and just let me know like she went on an hour walk and and how it was going well and all that kind of stuff and i'm just like yes. oh my gosh it Perfect. was huge it was huge to know that so uh also in a little bit you guys will be taking your questions as well and we have the ability today to add in somebody uh do a little split screen and find out uh, what's going on? If you have a quick question, we'll probably have a quick answer for you. At least that's our our goal for today. So uh, be sure to uh, think something up about what you want to ask us. Uh, honey, yesterday the black lab that was fun. I I so I taped the whole thing obviously right, and I I was even showing my family last night. I'm like, look at how bad this dog was shaking. I don't think I've ever had a dog in front of me shake that bad not not one that i can think of like either. almost to the point where her her leg was vibrating was on the vibrating. floor yeah i mean it was so oh my gosh you just feel so sorry for a dog like that you know um but it was cool to see how far she came in that yeah hour and a half too i mean yeah absolutely and we did a lot of work right you know there was a lot of leash work you probably recognize it. I tried a few different things that didn't work until yeah. it was finally like I got the owner with me and then got the dog moving and then we were moving and then it was easier. But uh, there are times when it's just like you want to you want to just hold on to that dog. Yes. Right. Like there's inside of me. I'm like, you don't have to hold the dog. You don't have to pet the dog. Don't need to coddle it right now. You're not going to help it. And so we're doing that, too. Right. It's just totally compared to somebody else who's, uh, you know, the, the owner's doing it and they are physically doing it all day, every day. And to us seeing a dog like that, we, we know that we want to get there, Yes, <laughs> but we have to take it a little slower. But what, uh, when you walked in with, it was Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo right? Yep. What was your first impression? Well, it was interesting because she was sniffing at first and the bark didn't come right away. She was sniffing at first. And then I think he sat at my feet and then it was a little while after that that she started barking at it. Yeah. Um, but I thought it, I thought it was interesting just to see her reaction to the situation, and yeah. thought Yo-Yo handled it well. I know I did too. I did too. Um, you guys, I'm going to post up a link for you to be able to uh, join us with. So that link right there that just went up, you can click on that. There's Mr. George. So we're going to fire him right nice. in here as quick as we can. Mr. George. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I haven't heard what you guys been talking about. I'm just parking the truck coming into work. So. Uh, we've just been talking about what's been going on here. We haven't jumped on an issue, yeah. but so 
I want to give everybody a little uh, a little idea how busy of a guy you are. So you've done about how many sessions? Just just uh, 2020. I think it was around 1,851 or 52. Ooh. And are, are those uh, private sessions sitting down with a client, or is it that and also like one-on-one -on -one training sessions with a dog? Well, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's it's uh, I do mostly privates with the clients. I do the cl you know uh, three or four classes a week. And, uh, you know, just uh, always doing something. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, no rest for the wicked. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told Matt when you were when you and I were talking a couple of weeks ago about how uh, you said Captain Haggard, he said anything less than 60 hours is part time. Right. Yeah. That's what he always said. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Do you, George, do you think there's a huge difference in the, the this generation of dog trainers compared to yours? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Some good, some bad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think certainly having the network available to us younger generation, you know, certainly helps to where you guys just had the telephone to start with and then by email your, your group, right, your group emails and such? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, you know, back in the day, you didn't really know a lot of other trainers. You might trip over one or two here and there. But, uh, uh, you know, since the advent of the Internet, of course, the trainer population has <laughs> exploded since the Internet started, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, a fair estimate, when I started in the 70s, you know, maybe there was, I don't know, 200 dog train, you know, professional making money at it, dog trainers in the country, wow. I think, you know, I mean, that's, I think that'd be a fair estimate. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, now there's, I don't know, 200,000 yeah, or something, right. who knows? Yeah. So. All right. So I know one thing that always kind of triggers your brain here is the, the old statement that a dog shows fear aggression. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Term. Yeah, so ex explain uh, that. Why why are you not a fan of the term fear aggression? Well, because in you know, and this is just my opinion, of course, but aggression's always forward, and you know, it usually has some level of intent in it. A dog that's biting out of fear or, or threatening out of fear um, isn't being aggressive. He's more so being defensive. Um, you know, a dog that really wants to bite you usually doesn't give you a whole lot of warning. You know, he just kind of pops off and bites yeah. you. Uh, most dogs that are throwing all that, that body language and temper tantrums and everything really don't want to bite, in my opinion. They're, they're trying to avoid it. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I try to try to educate my students that verbiage puts ideas in your head and makes you act accordingly. And you're going to be wrong a lot of times if you get hung up in my dog's fearful, you know, fear aggressive. Okay. He's being defensive. He doesn't like the situation. He's trying to make something happen or stop happening, uh, you know, with all those actions. So, um, you know, the other thing I'm a big fan of saying is this, and again, my opinion, other people can disagree. When people come in and say their dog's aggressive, um, I stop them right there and say, okay, let's, let's, let's not use aggressive as a, as a, uh, as a term, uh, describing their temperament, you know, uh, he, he's acting aggressively. Therefore that's a behavior he does. You see, it's, it's not yeah. a way of being, uh, aggression is not a way of being. It's, it's like a symptom and it's not, it's like a Some symptom and not the problem. Right. So I tend to use the word, if I have a dog that's just, you know, and these are so rare, but if I have a dog that's just vicious, you know, just, he's going to bite anything no matter what you do. You train him up and he's still going to bite you. I, I use the term vicious, you know, that's just an old term that's been around forever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so what I try to do is I try to get my in getting them a student's head and have them describe my dog. My dog acts aggressively when, mm. when X happens, you yeah. see? And then now we have a behavior. Okay. So aggression is an action and an option the dog has. Let's, let's look at teaching him some different options. So there's very few, what I call vicious dogs around, 
you know, I mean, extremely few. I probably haven't seen one this year, you know, and I've seen a lot of dogs. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So yeah. very, very rare dog. And you'll know it when you meet that dog. You, you, you'll know it. So. Well, and you had said, I remember seeing you had uh, written in a, it was in a Facebook group a couple of years ago, how I think you were doing an evaluation with a dog and you just got the, the vibe and the, he looked at you like that dog wanted to end your existence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I didn't take that job. As a matter of fact, that situation was, was a little nutty because I evaled the dog and I, and I gave it a go ahead to come in for training, but the dog, you know, they waited several weeks. And when I, when they came in, the dog was completely different than the dog I saw in the evaluation. Yeah. Wow. And within a very short amount of time, I, I made the decision right there on the spot that, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to take this work in, you know, I, and refunded our money and, you know, and, yeah. you know, smoothed it over as best I could and just explained to them, you've got more, you get, you've got a, uh, not only a gun here, it's a loaded gun and you have a gun that the trigger's broken Oof. and you know, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's a rare thing. I will, I will not help somebody out. And I've worked some very gnarly dogs over the years, but this one, told me and I'm at a place in my career, you know, I'm 60 years old, getting ready to enter my 44th year of doing this. If I get racked up now with a bad bite, I'm okay. It's done. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, and while I can probably get a different type of job, man, I've been doing this so long. It's, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. So anything that goes really south now can really end my career. So we made a fairly clear decision. We're just not taking that type of dog in. Yeah. You know, 20 years ago, I'd have taken that dog in a minute, yeah. you know, but uh, I don't do it now. And I don't think a trainer has to take that kind of dog in to have bragging rights and to make them feel good about themselves. There's too many dogs that, that need our help that you don't have to worry about ending your career yeah. over. You know, I'm not impressed when a young trainer says, I work with nothing but, you know, aggressive dogs. And I'm like, <laughs> What are you stupid? <laughs> you know, you go ahead and work that one aggressive dog, and maybe, maybe fix him. Maybe. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm doing thirty or forty good-natured, I don't know, labradoodles. That, <laughs> you know, just are pulling mama on the leash. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and the money's not that different. Right. <laughs> so, it's true. Right. Well, and I and I yeah. think you had said too that I, you know your definition of aggressive dogs these days is, uh, or the definition of aggressive dogs these days is different than the, the aggressive dogs you saw probably early on in your career. Oh yeah, by far. I haven't seen a, a, what I call a real hardcore stone killer in I don't know twenty years, man. Back in the day, you know the junkyard dogs and stuff. They've deleted the gene pool so much with all this spay and neutering. You know, think about all the good genetics that are getting spayed and neutered out of existence, too. But, uh, you know, those old, you know, I run Dobermans, yes. right? So I have these good natured, happy, high performance, just wonderful dogs, incredibly intelligent. Back in the 70s, Dobermans were the pit bulls of today, you know, yeah. the, you know. You know what I mean? They had that reputation. People didn't want Dobermans around because they were stone killers. Look at the movies from back then in the 70s. Right. You'll see it. Right. Well, and Magnum P.I. had the the Dobermans too, right? Zeus and Apollo. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and But those dogs were incredibly well trained. For sure. And, and, uh, but they still, but the, but the presence they put out right. compared to the Dobermans I'm running today, and I'm running a, a pretty high-end Doberman, yeah. you know? Totally different. Totally. So. Yeah. Uh, so we got a question here, George, if you want to take it, I'll, uh, post sure, it up here. Sure. I'll do as long as I can. I do have a one o'clock appointment when they roll in, I'll have to dump out. But All right. Ahead. So, uh, Deborah said any help for shaking and panting on a car ride, no matter how small, huge anxiety and CBD doesn't help. Yeah. Just dump those drugs in them. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, seriously. Here's what I tell people that have car problems. One, usually the only time they're throwing a dog in the car, they're going to the vet for the dog to get poked on and prodded and everything else. Or the, you yeah. Know. And so here's one thing I'll do. My dogs have zero problem in the thing. Feed the dog in the car. Just park the car, you know, in your driveway and 
That'd be feeding place, first of all, for a while. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're going to eat dinner. Let's go get in the car. You know, put your bowl in there, let them eat. Yep. Uh, two, uh, after that dog's real comfortable eating, you'll find out that he waited a day or two. They'll eat. You know, they're going to calm down enough to eat. Uh, then I'll tell them to fire the car off. You know, just sit there, read your phone, watch you in on the on the internet. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, then I, you know, while the dog's eating, and then of course then I'll have them, you know, I don't know, back out the driveway, drive down to the mailbox or something. You know, just every day I'd have that dog in that car. Um, you know, so it becomes part of every day versus it's always a big emotional event. Uh, also, look at your own driving habits and be honest with yourself. Okay? Your dog can't get, your dog your dog can't anticipate when you're going to stop at the red light. Up the yeah, street. you know yep. what I mean. And then if you're the type, you know, you know me, I run hard. I run these hot rods and stuff. And uh, but if you're flying up and it's you know getting down hard on those brakes at the last minute, that dog can't anticipate that. And yeah. of course, you accelerate. Maybe they're kicking back. They're going to get seasick. And uh, so they'll put that together. Hey, when I'm in this thing, you know, my, my belly starts feeling really oogie, you yeah. know. But uh, so I just teach my dogs from day one that the car is just the same as I would use a crate. You know, I just put them in the car for a while. I could play on the phone. I don't know, change a spark plug or something. And, and uh, you know, pretty soon they become acclimated. But really look at your own driving habits. How fast are you hooking around that right or that left turn? Remember that dog... If I'm sitting next to you, I can anticipate that and adjust. Yeah. But your dog can't do that, and uh, so they're all you're getting bounced all over the place more times than not. Yeah, it's like turn two at Daytona. They don't know that's coming. Right, exactly right. So, and then of course, once they start having some bad experiences, uh, they're going to start, you know, associating that car with this, and I don't like it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I'm not a big fan of throwing drugs in them. I mean, if I have a dog that truly just can't cope with it, I might get some some form of canine Dramamine or something to give them before a trip. Yeah. But really, I haven't had to do that. Yeah. You know? But I would if I needed to. This CBD oil, I don't have any opinion on it. I haven't used it. I've always been fairly anti any kind of drug. So to me, it, I know it's not marijuana, but just the same. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go for proof versus yep. opinion. Yep, I hear you. All right, well, we're going to cut you loose, George, so you got time to get to your lesson. <laughs> All right. All right thank, so, uh, anybody, thanks for popping. Y'all have a great day. We'll talk to you again. In- All right, thanks, George. All right. Bye. Oh, that was pretty cool. That was awesome. Yeah. That's been a long time coming. Right? It has been. You know what? It's interesting, too, is his, uh, when he talks about just going and sitting in the car, this is the, like we say, practice That's it when you, you don't need it. That's exactly what popped right? into my head. Yes. But I love, uh, I love how George said, just sit in your car. Yeah. Like change a watch your phone, yeah. change a spark plug, uh, do whatever. And then also, and we, it's funny. I never even thought that when you bring a dog home for the first time, also to when you're taking it from the shelter, it's in the car already going home. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We always talk about what to do with the dog when they get home. We're not even talking about what to do with the dog, picking it up from the shelter and getting it into the car. Yeah, bringing it home. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. We we haven't. Most of the time, there's all sorts of excitement. We have a new dog. If there's kids, this is, uh, you know, exciting. Totally. Right. There's, Are there's, you crating the dog in the car? Is the dog loose in the car? Yeah. 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 So it's it was kind of cool to to see that. Um so that's your first time seeing George too, right? Yes. Right. First time seeing him. Like, like you can hear the wisdom. Yes. Right. Like you can just tell he's the, been doing it for a long time. He's been doing it for, for quite some time, uh, which was very cool. So, so uh, George, for that, we thank you for, uh, for all your wisdom here too, by the way. Um, all right. So let's jump on to uh, the next question here. This is from uh, Marcy. How, how do you feel about neutering a Rottweiler at a year old? <clears throat> you know, here's the thing. There are a lot of countries um, that don't spay and neuter their dogs. Yep. And I think for us, I wish I wish we were in a setting that we didn't have to. Right. Because I am so curious to see dogs and to see them as their true self. 
the behavior of 100 percent right and the behavior and stuff i i do sometimes feel that the spaying and neutering is is an issue i get it because there is an overpopulation unfortunately that's a human thing that says if we pay better attention yeah, yes. we could actually have dogs back at who they truly are yeah you know so to me if, if you're looking at neutering uh the old adage of neutering your dog and spaying or whatever, that this is not going to fix a behavioral issue. No. And we don't know if this is a behavioral issue or not. Um, but it's not going to, it's not going to be the 180. Yeah, it's not going to fix anything. And now you have Lassie. Yes. Right? That's It's not going to happen. Um, but if you feel like you have to neuter maybe for health reasons. Uh, if you got to take your dog to daycare. If you got to take your dog to daycare or whatever. Um, then I, I think it's, I think it's different, but for me, if you're in a setting where you don't have to worry about that dog, getting another dog pregnant, then I think we leave it intact. I, I would agree. I don't know. That's, that's my opinion on that. I mean, but he has to be a well-behaved guy too, right? We just can't have a, a misbehaving. Still going to have rules. Yeah. And, and we got to make sure that dog stays close to home. Yeah. Not like, <laughs> yeah. what was his name? I don't know, but there was a dog when Gemma was... <laughs> There was a dog when Gemma was uh, in heat that uh, came from like that. What he came from Hyde Park. He came. <laughs> yeah, he crossed a, a highway. Uh, he came for probably as the crow flies a mile. Probably a mile as the crow yeah. flies. But yeah, and he did it multiple times too. Yeah. Ay ay ay. We probably have uh, time for one more person if they want to jump on here with us and ask us a question. I. Uh, this is the. Uh, uh, comment here that I put up. It's higher up in the comments. If you can see them, I will actually post it again here so you can see it. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's see. This is a good one here. So Molly says, mm. advice for acclimating a dog to a move to a new house. Okay. First of all, if you can get the dog out of the house while you pack everything up, that would be ideal. Yes. That's the first scenario. Uh, Lynn was the first one that really described that to us, I think, as far as like the pictures and the wall, the world is crumbling because pictures are coming down. Furniture's getting packed away while the dog is in the house. I don't during... know if I remember this. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was just, if you think about it from your perspective, if you went home and stuff was off the walls, what <laughs> you'd have questions. <laughs> yeah, I would. Right. Absolutely. So ideally it's best if you can actually board your dog. Um, <laughs> wow. out of the situation. Uh, and I honestly, th I honestly think when Zoe was here, uh, kind of the, you know, the, the gray, the gray charcoal, yeah. when she was here, they were moving and she was getting trained at the same time. Yeah. Like that was a win, win. Totally. So to me, I, you know, the new house do not, once you get into that scenario, do not let your dog walk around the house. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what else are you going to throw in on this? I, I was going to say it's a great opportunity to start setting new rules, creating a whole new routine if you were having issues before, because everything's going to be new and different. And this allows you to. Yeah, it's a it's it. a clean slate. It really too. is. It's a clean slate. So just as much as moving can create a problem, it's also a clean slate, too, that you guys can really like this is time to start fresh. So I would certainly start with crating. The, the dog is not allowed to run the house at all like let them go check out every room kind of thing this has to, there has to be structure i mean totally. it's okay if it's been weeks before the dog's seen the entire house yeah yeah and they have to get used to the noises too neighbors noises house noises all that kind of and stuff it just gives you the chance to work with them like what do you want from them in each situation in each moment when you're yes. cooking dinner where do you want them when someone comes to the door what do you want your dog to do yes yep uh, so we have a question from somebody that you know quite well. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. So this is from Christina, who says, uh, best advice for dealing with the wiggles when trying to brush teeth. And this was actually one of Matt's private lessons uh, puppies. So why don't you, I'll let you go ahead answer, because you know who this is and yes. who this dog is. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, it's just like what we talked about, Christina, with the behavior expectation drill for going down to start brushing. If he starts to wiggle at that point, I'm just gonna stop, have him on a leash, wait a second, 
go back in as soon as I get that toothbrush closer, the brush, and he starts to wiggle, stop everything, relax, and he's going to learn over time. When he does that movement, when he stands up and starts wiggling, oh, that's what stops mom. And then you can continue. Yeah. And it and it just takes some time too. I mean, it's it's all that there is to it. It, it takes time and practice, and just like what we talked about with George. Yes. Practice when you don't need it. Practice when you don't need it. And you got a young little guy too, so you keep doing what you're doing, and things will fall into place. Yeah. It'll it'll get there. It'll get there. And if it doesn't, you know a couple guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's. Uh, we'll do one more question here. From uh, Carly Moore, would you recommend rehoming a resource guarding seven-month-old puppy when young kids are in the house? <sighs> hmm. First, I would seek training to see if that's something that can be easily fixed. Or if it is, even is resource guarding. Yes, that, that is a great point. Yeah. But yeah, go ahead. And then from there, depending on what your trainer says, um, take what they say and apply their techniques, or if you don't agree with it, look for help somewhere else. I would definitely, in my mind, I would seek out two or three people and try to find something that worked for me. And if nothing worked, then then it might come to that. But the other part of this too, is she's already considering rehoming. Yes. Yes. And young kids, and we, we see a picture here, so this could be the young kids. So these, point. right. So uh, now I look at it and go, if, the, if those are my kids, yeah. And I have a dog like this. I want to keep them safe. Even, even if it's me now and I know this dog, I don't know if I have time to, to deal with to it. To deal with that, yeah. Right? Like it, And then we have to look at a compatibility issue. True. Are, are we compatible? It Does this work? Yeah. You know? Uh, so she said, uh, here we go. She has bitten their hands when they go near her toys. Yeah. See? So, and, and. From the looks of things, if the kids are about that age, they don't know well enough yeah, that's, to yeah. stay away from the you dog. You can have that conversation, and it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to – Carly, I'm not going to be the guy that tells you to give up your dog. I did see that. Uh, I'm not going to be the guy that tells you to, to give up your dog. That's going to be your choice as a mother what to do. And here's the thing. Uh, you can't give that seven month old puppy to another home with kids. <laughs> yeah. You're setting it up to fail. I, if anything, that dog, if you decide to rehome it, that dog should go into a shelter of some sort, a shelter that has a trainer, a shelter that can work with that dog uh, and give it a chance at a different life um, and, and a compatible home too. I think that would be ideal. Totally. Yeah. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this today. This was fun. I This was, this was, awesome. this was great. I hope it looked as good uh, on your end, too, as it did on this end, too. So uh, we will be back. We're going to be doing this every Wednesday, 1230. And uh, my goal is to also get this up on YouTube as well for you guys. So uh, until next week, you guys, we will catch you later. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Vermont Dog Trainer Show. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review, subscribe, and share it with your dog friends. For up-to-date information, visit Vermont Dog Trainer Show on Facebook. Until next time. Shut up and train the dogs, man.